back to my channel. As you can probably tell from the title, I am filming the highly requested video, a typical day in the life of a Amsterdam University College student. So as you guys know, I am a full-time student at Amsterdam University College and I actually got a lot of requests after our Q&A video of people you know, wanted to know more about my life as an AUC student because we do live on campus. We live in the dorms all together. So today I will be showing you guys. So right now actually um, all the students are having midterms including me. So I had a ton of paper deadlines and I actually have an exam on Friday and another paper deadline. Um, tomorrow evening um, and I'm just gonna have an online class and I'm just gonna film like a little part so you guys can see what our online classes actually look like right now because as you know Miss Rona because of the virus a lot of things have changed in terms of the dynamics at our university college like we used to have on-campus courses of course all the time and now we've switched to online classes and some on-campus courses and the rules around the on-campus courses have also changed because of the recent press conference held last week by the Dutch government um, so we're not allowed to enter the AUC building without face masks and then they did say um, when you sit down at your seat then you are allowed to take them off but you know you can keep them on and uh, how it's like laid out is that in every classroom um, there is one and a half meter distance between everybody there's pretty good like air circulation around the building also like the windows are always open um, and you just need to keep your distance you need to practice good hygiene of course no greeting people no hugs no handshakes nothing but I'm actually really glad that we're even allowed to go to school and have these on-campus courses because I and I think I speak for every student that online courses are not the best and that's worded lightly because i don't know i have concentration problems and especially if it's a really really long course and there's a lot of information it's just on a screen and i think i speak for every student that you know it's been really heavy for us these online courses anyway so right now i have an online class it's starting in one minute so i'm just gonna start up um and then after that i have an on-campus course right away which i will also be filming so then i'll just be taking you with me to the academic building just down the street and i'll show you guys what that looks like as well hello everybody that's joining us on zoom it's nice to see you Please. How's everybody doing? Refreshed, regenerated world events, right? He even talks about the influences of things like the Second World War as well as, of course, colonialism that all of these external changing conditions produce changes in emotionality, right? So we'll do a little bit of time in a breakout room and I'd like you to consider what, what you take from this text. Hello. Hi. I don't, did you, did like the whole class hear me sigh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so I feel like the main thing I got from it was like, they like brought it into like talking about discourse because one is pertaining to the private world of the individual consciousness and the other is to the public social world. Yeah. And I feel that, I don't know, I feel like for me that was the main thing that he was arguing. For me, I think what I what I got most out of the article was like his approach to ethnographic research, because you took um, digital anthropology as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the text we had about the woman who interviewed like the the, the high school kids? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. She was talking about how it it doesn't work well if you. Uh, are like emotionally invested in the yeah. in your interviewee, so you need to be as like objective as possible. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I got out of this article was that he's actually saying like the opposite, right? So he's saying um, if you put in your own sort of like take on something, then you can understand it better and you can enhance the research more because from like an observation standpoint, you might not really grasp the the issue. Yeah, that's true. What sorts of elements came up? He describes his own experience of grief in relation to his discussion of the grief um, that he was simultaneously uh, exploring and hearing about within the Alumba community, right? So this is uh, what Alicia's referring to. Can I ask um, a question? Yeah, 
worse. Um, because I noticed that, um, Rosaldo, this text was from 93, and the, you're talking about now how this is like the reflexive turn, um, but then I'm just wondering why Boyd, when she, she I mean, she wrote it in, I mean, recently because of the, the social media age, how then that sort of like worked? Like, what about reflexivity? Yeah. What has happened? Well, reflexivity remains and, and has simply imp has simply increased since then. So, reflexivity, and I mean this is hard. I'm, I'm making kind of sweeping statements about a discipline which we don't want to do, right? So there's there's obviously contestation and difference within the field. But the idea, generally, and we've seen this in other disciplines as well, of moving away from a model of uh, the social sciences or the humanities in which there is an essentialist explanation by outside and into contesting and troubling inside or outside our models and thinking about the positionality of knowledge and the, the ways that we are continuously engaged in relations of power in the production of that knowledge. And that we need to, that, that reflecting on that process is a crucial part of any act of, of uh, knowledge production, right? particularly in the field like anthropology. Okay, there's a lot to say about that, but I need references. But does that answer the question a little bit, Alicia? Yeah. Do not? Yeah. Yes. He's making himself visible and reflecting on his role to a, an extent. Hi guys, I'm back. So I just finished my online course. So I'm ready to leave. I'm wearing my coat and I'm just going to walk over to the academic building for my next class. Um, and I'm going to take you with me, so I'll see you downstairs. I'm back, so I'm outside now. So we're actually having a guest lecture today for the course uh, Cultural Memory Studies. And if you're interested in memory and how that plays into culture, if you ever come to AUC, then I would really recommend this course because it's actually one of my favorite courses. So this is our building. So with the rules surrounding the virus, um, you need to check in with your student card. this uh, midterm point uh, in CMS because it helps us look backward as well as forward. The question of the media of memory and the way in which they shape the memory um, has increasingly become central um, to theoretical and uh, conceptual uh, questions in the field. Today I'm going to talk to you about what immersive virtual reality is and I want to give us the framework to then start thinking about memory studies within virtual reality. But before I kind of get into it, I would love to share with you a little bit about my academic trajectory. So I was very excited about cultural memory studies and I did the social sciences track here and also in sociology and IR and then minor in literature. And then I was thinking about how to continue after after this. And then I ended up um, looking at immersive VR um, and found a PhD at Stanford University. Discussion that's going on in uh, the field, which is about the ethics of VR. So, for a lot of VR developers, um, virtual reality is seen as the ultimate empathy machine. So they believe that virtual reality is the next medium that is going to help us become more empathetic towards others and um, actually um, tell the stories of marginalized people in the then, fortunately, there's also some critical or cultural critics who talk about um, toxic embodiment and artificial empathy. Basically, he talks about how um, VR is a very niche product still. It's mostly both developed and used by um, white men who are on the top of the social economic status um, ladder. And then having these kind of populations embody 
um, refugees, marginalized women, etc., is for Lisa Nakamura incredibly problematic because it takes agency away from their embodiment and um, from their lived experience, which is then simulated. Um, and um, there's this phrase he uses feeling good about feeling bad rather than doing anything to alleviate kind of structural issues. Hey guys, so I am coming to you from a very, very stressful week. I really cannot even explain how stressed and tired I am. Like, this week has been so hectic. I've had paper deadlines, exams, back to back. And um, right now, I'm actually going over to Mickey and I'm gonna meet some other friends and we're actually gonna study together. So one of the really easy things about living in the dorms is that everybody is so close by. So that's why I'm going to go to Mickey's right now um, to have dinner together. It's also easier like cooking together so you don't have to do it yourself because we don't even have time when you need to study and everything. I'm also gonna give you like a little tour of what the inside of the dorms look like and how you get from one building to another building. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little glimpse of what it looks like when you know we have dinner together and study when we're really busy and it's really nice if you have people you know that live literally one building next to you so that you can you know go through it together I guess. There's always just like random furniture outside all the time. So one important thing to get through the buildings is this magnet key. If you do not have this magnet key, you can literally not get through any of these doors. So I'll just show you how it works. Can we just talk about the amount of times I had to use this magnet? Like I always complain how far it is, even though it's like a two minute walk. Hi guys! Hi! Hey, so I'm Sis. really gonna be... Yeah, no, I need to study, honestly. I have a deadline at midnight too. <laughs> like two even, I have two deadlines. Okay. Why am I the only one with no deadlines? I mean, Cause you're blessed. <laughs> That's why. Honestly. <laughs> God has favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the plan? Are we gonna cook first or study first? first. Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Do you have rice? Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I brought some um, veggies. Amazing. And some potatoes. Yeah, like I do have, so, I do have like rice and pasta and noodles and sauces, but I just don't have vegetables. <laughs> it's fine. I love how we always just bring like individual stuff and we and make it we co <laughs> we come to a dish I have eventually. Basics. How do people bring their stuff? <laughs> I'm actually gonna show you the layout of how people 
you know, do their room. Really white, very simple, um, gold accents. Kind of very girly. Like there's a cat <laughs> in the middle as well. I like a big closet space with a TV. Also just flowers. Flowers. I like plants, if you kind of know this. <laughs> And no, I love it. And it's a so big cute. Closet, it's my stuff. Yeah, I think it, just, it wasn't necessary to have a big couch. It's not a place. I'm like, just chilling and out here. Yeah, that's kind of my room. It's not really full, but I feel like I like it that way. Just kind of simple. Everything yeah. is tucked away. And yeah. On every door, uh, you can write your name or just something that describes you. Okay, so this is my room. And when you come in, you always have like either on the left side or the right side, you have your kitchen and the bathroom. Um, yeah, some people they put up like cabinets over here, but I just thought these shelves would be better. Yeah, that's and, so nice. Um, yeah, we're not allowed to cook on gas, so everyone has like a little um, cooking plate. Yeah, the hot plates. Yeah, um, or like an induction plate. And this is the bathroom. So you just have like a sink, a toilet, and then over here is the shower. There's no flooring in the room. Yeah. And like you can see it kind of over here. It's kind of like orange. Yeah, that's the original floor. That's the original floor, but most people they put like a floor They're over orange, it. Yeah. But I think most people they put like their bed in a corner. Because yeah, because if your bed is in the middle, just because our rooms are not big, it's just like a studio. But I mean, you set it up perfectly. Like you have your TV, mm. your stuff. He even has a couch and a table. Oh my God, you're. F <laughs> I'm you have class. class. I'm dead. Look at the length difference, please. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, we're just gonna uh, quickly cook some dinner because we're starving. Yeah. And then we need to what study. What time is it? We'll show you guys when we're done in a minute. Do you have tomatoes? Do you have Bell one pepper? tomato? Yeah. How do you have one tomato? <laughs> <laughs> Can we have the tomato, please? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, goodbye. <laughs> about seven position on um, the issue that you choose and to try and argue your point so as to persuade your reader. I oh, mean I talked about the one on genocide. You know how like in the movie people were like, oh he's such a savior and everyone's yeah. like he's safe but in reality he actually kind of like sold out people to the yeah, sold out the, Hutu, the Hutus to the Tutsis so they could be and killed. And he's now arrested. So we just had dinner and we literally have deadlines in like what? Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. So we need to go and do that. Yeah. So we'll be back. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Do you see our eyes? It's just getting smaller and smaller. I'm tired. I'm so exhausted, guys. It's literally 1 a.m. Okay, no. <laughs> We're all going insane. Okay. My parents. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey guys, so I'm back in my room and I am still studying. <laughs> um, everybody went to sleep already, but I submitted my papers, um, but I also have a presentation tomorrow morning that I still have to do some work for, so I can't go to sleep just yet. It's currently 2.24 a.m. I am still on my grind. I am gonna make this work. I am going to try to study until 3 and then really go to bed. I'll be done when I get done. We gotta get this degree. But yeah, I made my hot chocolate and I'm just sitting here pretty cozy. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the literal life of a student. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little 
day in the life of an AC student vlog. I'm gonna try and like vlog more often because I'm really enjoying it and you guys seem to like it so yeah if you have some vlog suggestions comment it down below. I'm gonna get my work done and I will see you guys in my next video.